Hi everyone, it's Jennifer Trask here, and I'm really excited to bring you day three. I'm actually home from Date with Destiny. I just ran out of time. I couldn't believe it. I had people who had been there before tell me, you're not going to be able to do it, and I said, no, no, I'm going to try. And I got two days in, and just, I the few hours we had throughout the day, I had to sleep so I could function, learn, and thus bring it back to you. So that's why it's a little bit behind, but totally worth it. And I do have to say, um, I'm going to give you, I took a bit of video while I was there and I'm going to, I'm going to do that in the last blog post. Uh, and even though I'm giving you a lot of this information, uh, it by no means encompasses all the things that we learned. And I do highly, highly recommend to go with Date With Destiny yourself. But in the meantime, uh, I'm going to give you one, one point that really stood out for me from day three that I felt was important. And to be honest with you, I actually, um, kind of knew this information before, but when Tony explained it in this way, it made it easier to understand and relate to other people. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the example that I have as well that goes with it. So essentially, um, there are, emotions are what run your life. I mean, you look at people who are um, really happy, and I'm not talking about fake happy, like people who love their life and are very happy versus people who are miserable versus people who are kind of just living every day as they go. And the difference in their lives is the emotions that they feel. And so what you want to look at is if you want to be a happy person and really love your life, then you need to look at what creates your emotions. And in this example, we're going to talk about a triad which includes your focus, your language, and your physiology. And essentially, these are the three things that come together that create emotion in you. And emotion is going to impact the behaviors that you have. So then the behaviors are gonna impact your results and the results are what's actually happening in your life and whether or not your needs are getting met. If you go back to day two video, I talked about the six human needs. And so essentially, I'm gonna explain this through an example that everyone's going to be able to relate to and it'll make it really easy. If you had two girls, uh, let's say they're, I don't know, 30, and they were dating two guys about the same time, and both the guys broke up with both the girls at the same time. And let's say that girl A got really upset and why me and for six months all she thought about with this ex-boyfriend and I'm sure you've either been in this situation before or you know someone who's been in this situation before and you know they just constantly focus on oh what did I do or what could I have done differently and and just like for six months they do nothing else but you know wish that this relationship was back somehow or this person versus if you had um, a girl B say who same thing happened to her but she decided and said you know what I don't want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me and I'm going to look at what I learned from this relationship and how I can move forward and I'm going to have fun with my friends and I'm going to enjoy being single and work on myself and you know work on my work and go have fun and and so and then you know more than likely to be honest with you that person's probably going to meet someone a lot faster than the other person is but regardless the same thing happened to each girl but both girls because of their focus what they focused on whereas one focused on the past what she could have done what happened um, where the other girl focused on um, okay what did I learn from this relationship and how can I move forward with it and how can I you know just move up to the next level of my game essentially and the language that they use, the other person, why me, why does this always happen, versus someone who will say, you know what, it doesn't all, you, you get what you, you get what you need, not, not always what you want, um, and I'm going to, you know, thank this person for coming into my life and teaching me whatever they taught me and move on. Uh, and then as well, your physiology, obviously each girl uh, the poor me girl is going to have a small, probably be curled up on the couch a lot, eating a lot of chocolate, which is going to change her physiology as well, um, versus the other girl who decides to go out with her friends and have fun and so on and so forth. So it's, it's three common elements that bring together the emotion that they're going to feel. So each girl creates a different emotion from the same experience, which impacts 
their behaviors, which impacts their outcomes, which then meets or does not meet their needs and whether it's a healthy way to meet needs or a negative way to meet needs. So essentially what I'm, the, the point of this is, is if you look at what words are you using in your daily life? Uh, what focuses, what focus are you taking whenever anything happens to you? One of the things that I learned to do a while ago that really serves me well is when something um, negative happens to me or it's not necessarily the best situation in the world, what I do is I actually, I doesn't, I don't get angry very easy. It, it takes a lot to get me angry for the simple reason that I don't see negative situations or people as necessarily negative. I see them as message senders that I either need to change something, um, my actions or my words, or I'm meant to learn a lesson. And I promise you, if you look at life that way, your life will be so much happier and you will absolutely the world will be a whole new place if you can just get to that point. And that is because that's what I choose to focus on. I don't focus on the negative fact. I, I look at it from another outside perspective, from what was I meant to get from this person, what lesson was I meant to receive from this situation, and so on and so forth. So remember, it's your your physiology, your focus, and your language. So you know, don't say, oh, I'm such an idiot when you do something stupid. Laugh with yourself if you do something silly. Um, and also, with your physiology, if you're not feeling good, just get up and move. Put on a happy song and dance or go for a walk or a run. Because when you change your physiology, if you're up dancing, it's really hard to be sad. Um, so that's really going to help you move forward to find better emotional states, which will affect your whole life, I promise. So that's the lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment below and share in the networks as well so that other people can learn from this. Because to be honest with you, a lot of people probably know this subconsciously, but consciously it's not there. But once you become conscious of the fact that your language patterns, what you focus on, and the way you move really impact how you feel, you become a lot more conscious of it and you probably become a lot more happier too. That's what happened to me when I learned this information years ago. So that's it for now and we will have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.